Welcome to Seltzer Squad, the podcast about staying sober in the city with your hosts, Kate Sander and Jess Valentine. Hey, Kate, how can people get more Seltzer Squad in their lives? We have finally launched our Seltzer Squad Patreon, where you'll be able to get early access to episodes on Wednesdays instead of Fridays, our monthly bonus episode. And if you really love us and you're the slickest bitch around, you will also be able to see video podcast recordings. I mean, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want more Kate and Jess in their lives? But in all seriousness, it really does help us move the podcast forward. Yes. Subscribe at patreon.com slash Seltzer Squad and help us keep this pod going. Jess, what's our number one piece of advice when people are getting sober? Therapy. 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 So much therapy that I'm going to school to be a giver of therapy. This is true. BetterHelp reached out to partner with us at the Social Squad to offer 10% off a monthly membership to BetterHelp.com. What is BetterHelp.com? BetterHelp is an online therapy platform that is for individuals, for couples. You take a short quiz, you get matched up with a mental health professional, and you, through the app, are able to video or you can just message back and forth with a licensed professional to give you counseling and guidance on anything and everything that you're going through. So how do our listeners use our code? You just go to betterhelp.com slash seltzer squad and you'll receive 10% off your first month. Hey, Kate. Hi, Jessica. What do you think about answering some questions from the squad? I am into it. Just want to preface that by saying I'm not a professional yet. Neither is Jess. So if you really have questions that you are burning ones about your life, these are our thoughts and opinions and advice unsolicited, but also check out a therapist if you would like to have your questions ongoingly answered as (laughs) we do with our therapist, Jody. Um, we we can, we can, we can ponder with these people. Yeah. It's just, um, our opinions. Mm -hmm really. Um, This one may or may not have an actual question. Mm. So let's just go into it. This is from Elle. Hi, I'm a new listener and I've binged all your episodes. Y'all have been so important to my resolve to stay sober and I'm thankful for that. Had something disappointed happening this morning and didn't know who to talk to about it. So I decided to scream into the void, aka (laughs) your inbox. (laughs) All right. This is a few months old. Mm -hmm like a lot of months old, like from last year. So hopefully this has gotten better and we are just seeing it now. We have a lot of emails though. So I am 27 and have struggled with binge drinking addiction since I was 22. In the roughly five years that I was entrenched in the issue, I had been Baker acted twice, which, um, do you know what that is? No. Baker acted is, I believe when they put you in like the psych ward or something saying that you're dangerous, obviously don't quote me. Okay. You're probably Googling it. Yeah. But I, I is heard it like a 5150 little, kind of? I don't know what that is. That's like a court mandated mental health. It might be. Okay. Um, but yes, attempted suicide, lost a job, been on and off of antidepressants always mixing it with booze regardless, been severely abused in relationships, severely abused people in relationships, lost a friendship of 10 plus years, lost, I don't even know how much money in clothing articles, disrespected the shit out of my family, embarrassed myself countless times, become a regular at half of the local bars in my city, slept with lots of people I didn't want to sleep with, and mostly lost all respect and love for myself. All right, I'm sure so many people can relate so far. I've been struggling since 2017 to maintain sobriety, which I first attempted after a failed suicide attempt and made it about three months before giving in and going back to the bottle of shitty house Merlot at my favorite local pub. I've had several month month to two month long stints of abstaining since then, always being noncommittal outwardly to my peers and family so as to not let anyone down. Get that. Mm -hmm. But internally, desperately wanting 
it to stick. It never did. And I always went back. And although I managed to mostly curb a lot of my riskier behaviors, I was still treating myself like shit and feeling like shit about it, unable to grow in any ways that mattered or make any moves towards my future goals. And I didn't even enjoy drinking anymore. Every time I drank, whether it was three white claws or a whole bottle of Jack, I was swallowed by guilt and shame. I knew I was feeding this dark part of me that I needed to let go of, but I felt more comfortable feeding the darkness than I did with giving up alcohol. I knew me at my best was sober. I just didn't have the courage to make it happen yet. This past August, three year, the three-year anniversary of my suicide failure, I met my boyfriend's little brother's girlfriend. She was coming up on her year anniversary of sobriety and meeting her was just the little last push I needed at Aww. the time to go full force into my second real attempt at sobriety. That's great. She was down to earth and funny and I finally got to meet an intentionally sober person instead of just looking at them online and wondering where they were in the real world. The timing of it all just felt right. I'd been heavily considering total sobriety, was in a great relationship. I had no desire of fucking up and felt ready to make a change. I let her know that she had motivated me to try again and we became friendly over social media and even hung out once in a while to do yoga or go on a nature walk since she was, God, I don't know why I can't pronounce the word, simultaneously made her way into my close friend group around the same time that I met her. I had started to feel this feel that she was being awkward or standoffish around me, but I'm socially anxious person and convinced myself that I was imagining things or so I thought mm. dot, dot, dot. I wonder if the girl went back to drinking. I That's what I thought I immediately. Know. Right. Okay. Today, Thanksgiving, she posted a long post on social media about sobriety. One of the, points was for people who are short-term committed to sobriety, think dry January or abstaining to lose weight, etc., to not equate their struggle to that of those who have a genuine addiction and need sobriety in order to live a normal life. She said having a conversation is great, but that they're ultimately not the same thing and reminded people not to appropriate addiction disorders if they don't have one. So far, I'm agreeing with the girl, right? I'm annoyed, but go on. Okay. I mean, it depends also on like yeah. how she's worded it and everything. I messaged her completely agreeing with her point. I'm all for, and, and I'm sorry, I'm all for any and everyone experimenting with sobriety, but it is a little strange to connect with someone whose motivations and goals for being sober are so different from mine. So sober tourists is basically what they're saying, right? Yeah. They just want a quick fling with sobriety while I literally need a lifetime mm-hmm. commitment with it. Her response to my message was kind of shocking and hurtful. Oh, shit. It's about her. Although I That's totally I agreed with her. Yeah. She <laughs> sent me a long message back, not addressing anything I said and telling me that although she was happy for me, she did not feel our reasons for sobriety were the same. Ugh. And as a result, she did not want to discuss it any further with me as I made her uncomfortable. Hmm. I immediately apologized and explained that I had been trying for years to be sober and just wanted to connect with another sober person, not stress her out. I also said I must have misunderstood her as I thought we had both chosen sobriety for our mental health and wasn't aware that her reasons were different from mine. Her response to this made me feel even worse. She apologized and told me she didn't know I was committed to sobriety and thought I was just taking a break and studying the effects of alcohol on the brain. That's weird. Even though I have never said or implied to anyone that I'm anything less than completely sober, I would have just posted a couple of enlightening things I read in the book Alcohol Explained on my Facebook as a way to generate discussion around its impact on mental health. She also told me that she would love to sit down and talk about what we have in common, but that it was overwhelming to her because she felt like a bad sober role model and that she's being put on this pedestal of pain by everyone who follows her. Her words, not mine. Even though she regularly posts about her sobriety and is a small influencer whose main content centers around nudity, yoga, and veganism. Basically, she is making herself an influencer whose content centers around a lifestyle support to support mental and physical health. I guess I'm just confused as to why she is so open about her journey online if she's unwilling to speak to people about it, especially when they're just agreeing with her. And with my message being totally innocuous and friendly, her response made it obvious that she had been silently judging my sober journey from afar, mm-hmm. probably from the moment it started. Most deaf. And 
but yeah, and me providing my input was just the tipping point of her expressing her disdain, disdain for my opinions. Not a good feeling. She's the first and currently only sober person I have met, and I made it a point to reach out to her. It definitely stings to feel she thought that I'm a fake sober this whole time. And even though she sort of apologized, it was more of a, oh, sorry, I thought you weren't worth my time, but also have so little time. And everyone wants so much for me. So I hope you understand. Apology. Did Ooh. I mention the girl has basically moved in with one of her best friends and see her on a nearly weekly basis between my boyfriend's family and my social life? I'm not exactly a fan sliding in her fan mm. sliding into her DMs, taking up her precious time. It was just a bit friendly conversation with someone I see pretty often and now i have to go and eat thanksgiving meal with her judgmental presence yikes anyway i guess the whole point of this was just to vent and say that no not every sober person is your friend or ally and just because you have the one core thing in common doesn't mean that they won't try to gatekeep you over it this is true sobriety doesn't make someone inherently good or their friendship inherently healthy some people seem to get a feeling of superiority from their sobriety and that kind of grosses me out. Feeling pretty discouraged from trying to connect with other sober people at the moment, but I know I'll bounce back. Just wanted to share with you guys the only other sober people I know. Oh, just want to share with the only other sober people I know, you guys, LOL. Um, and then, you know, mm. she says thanks for the podcast. So that's um, that's a lot. It's, I mean, I totally. A lot of thoughts. Yeah. I mean, I feel for this girl. It's weird because it doesn't sound like she's a sober tourist. It's also weird that this girl's like, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think a lot of this like social media shit is like people taking things that ne not ne weren't necessarily targeting them and taking it personally. So that's where I like have mm. an issue with this overall because sobriety is so personal and so individual yes. that like if you are friends with like, I even see that in my, you know, my real life with my sober friends. If somebody posts something, I, like, interpret it through my own personal, right? Like, my shit. Lens, and I'm like, yeah. oh, is this, like, some weird, you know, like, passive aggression? Does this have any... And I have to remind myself, like, this probably has nothing to do with me. And if it does, and they're sure. too much of a coward to come to me to talk about it, then That's I don't true. need to be it's dealing with this anyway. Aggressive. Yeah. So, on the one hand... I'm annoyed with the with I'm just get the goopy one. I'm annoyed with the goopy one because she is seemingly like can't be bothered by like somebody who's definitely trying to be friends with and I think like judging the levels to which someone's committed to their mental health is yeah. not on any of my business. It's like, oh, I'll only be friends with you if you've got like 90 days or mm -hmm. 2 years. Like that's weird. You're like I don't think you're Remember the question that we got about like the the sober couple and the guy was not cool with like the wife saying that she was an alcoholic because he wasn't cool. Like he didn't believe she like lived yes. up to the definition. I feel like it's the same yes. kind of situation here where it's like you're not like drunk enough. Like, yeah. Drunk enough or sober or enough I didn't, or whatever. You know, I thought you were being a sober tourist and I don't know. I mean, my initial feedback is like you need to find more than one person as a sober person like connect yeah. in life for sure because Which, you can't put November. all of your stock in one like human because they will never live up to your expectations and it seems sure. like the goop girl goop person is just like a sober social climber yeah that's the vibe that I'm getting like oh there's so many people like I have to be perfect it's like the whole point of putting yourself online and connecting with others authentically is to to be comfortable like with yourself right? to be able to have ups and downs and not make it like a quotable moment for everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know that I would want a friend that's just like that. If I'm yeah. the girl writing in, you know, if it, I, I don't know I mean, that I would want to just have, you know, this like sober influencer friend experience either. Yeah. It sounds like she doesn't. It sucks when it's like the one person that you've met mm -hmm. so far in sobriety, like, Puts a bad taste like in your I, mouth. Like we said, this was in November. So mm -hmm. I'm sure by now um, she's met, made more friends mm -hmm. and hopefully, like hopefully. But it's true. Like I know for myself, there's plenty of sober people that I've like met and they're just, they're not my people. Yeah. You know, like, yes, we do. They have just happen this, like, to be core. sober. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. But like I could find something that I have in common with all different types of people that mm-hmm. I would not necessarily want to be friends with. So it's tricky. It sucks. Um, it sucks. Also, if th- this girl like made a passive aggressive comp like pose to uh, our, our listener, it's just weird. Yeah. But people love being on soapboxes. And especially in this day and age with social media, like nothing about this surprises me. I'm not surprised even a little bit. It's a bummer. I think the thing that's annoying to me for L is that it's like triggering a shame. Like I'm not good enough or I'm not enough. Like yeah. I'm not being, you know, moralistic enough in my sobriety. So therefore like I'm not doing this right. And that's annoying to me because there is so many right ways to do this. And you just have to find other people doing a different right way. And mm-hmm. if this is just, you know, like that's actually an issue that I have with like sober influencers is like it's it. It feels like a branded experience of something that's like very non-linear and yes. like very complex yeah. and you Just can't, and then the you likes. end up excluding <laughs> certain people unintentionally or maybe intentionally sometimes. And that's the whole, that's like the anti point of these, like this podcast, right? Like it's not to single yeah. anybody out or make them above or Mm-mm. below. I will There's say, no right or wrong. Like, you know, do you have any friends that you feel like are sober tourists or not doing, Do I? or that are not doing the work. Um, I felt like that's what Cameron was doing, and I was right. I think that she thought that she just needed to stop for a minute because mm-hmm. her drinking was out of hand, but always had the intention to go back to it. Mm-hmm. Um, when which, she wasn't drinking, mm-hmm. do you feel like she wasn't taking it serious enough? I don't know. It was a non-issue. It wasn't even anything we talked about. But mm-hmm. then, like, towards the end of her sobriety stint is when she would, like, make comments about, like, well, one day I'd like to have a glass of wine sure. with dinner when I'm an old lady or something like that. But it seems so far in the future. Yeah. And that would upset me. And then the pandemic happened. Mm-hmm. And, you know, who knows? Maybe if the pan- – I'm sure if the pandemic didn't happen, things would be different. But, I mean, could have, should have, would have. It's like, who really knows? Mm-hmm. Um but other than that, I don't know. Like, I don't um, really there's... judge people's, like, levels of sobriety, you know? Like, I think the t- the times where I get exasperated with, like, our community or something is, like, when people come to the table with the same thing over and over and over again. And it's, like, you need different tools. And I can't mm-hmm. continue to expend my help if you're unwilling to like absorb that information in the way that is going to work for you. And then I think that's when like my patience runs out, but I'm not here to like, I don't know, judge my, my, my commitment versus yours. You know, I would never, I don't think about that. Like even in you and me dynamic, I never think about like, is your commitment to sobriety above or below mine? Like that just doesn't, isn't the thing I think about. Yeah. And like, even, you know, some people are like Cali sober where they still Mm -hmm. like smoke pot. Like, I don't give a fuck about that. Um, I would say the one thing that kind of like annoys me, if you will, more so than like sober tourism is when people email you or message or when you're out in public, when they're drunk. Mm -hmm. And say things like, oh, yeah, I don't drink that much. Or, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I cut back. Or, oh, yeah, I should buy. It's like, that bothers me more. Right. Because, like, but they're really yeah, like, not doing the work. I don't really get work. the sense that that's happening here. I just think if no. I were to give Elle advice as if she was a friend, I would be like, fuck this person. Like, yes. uh... Yeah, this girl sucks. You need to do whatever work you need to do to sort of diffuse this in your mind because you will run into this person again. And I don't want you to give her that judgmental power over you. So however you can figure out how to like take that away from her, then your dynamic will totally change. Because if you don't need anything from her, your dynamic will totally change. Like you're somehow, I'm getting the vibe that you're somehow seeking her approval Approval. through, yeah, through this like friendship. And if you are able to let go of like seeking the approval through this friendship, it will diffuse these feelings of judgment because you will need, you won't need anything from her. And you do need a sober crew and a squad yeah. but it, maybe it also would have been so convenient because it. it was like i think it's her boyfriend's yeah of course little brother's girlfriend so that would have yeah. been so convenient but like people suck which sucks yeah and you just got to keep trying on other things until you click with the right people and seeking yeah. out other you know 
like don't just seek us out. There's many, many, many bajillions of communities. You can check out resources on our website, but I mean, join some communities and find some chicks that you vibe with. I think it's really cool that some Seltzer Squad people from our Facebook group have been meeting in real life. I don't know know. where, but I know that they've been like making their own little hangout groups and I want people to do that everywhere. Yeah, it's awesome. So that's my thoughts on Elle and her goopy friend. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Kate, what's another way that the squad can help support the podcast? In addition to just listening or signing up to our Patreon, y'all can shop our online merch store, which has a variety of different sober treats from mugs to sweatshirts to tanks and teas, everything. All of our signature sayings are all over our sober merch. So visit seltersquadshop.com and check it out. Treat yourself to something sober while supporting the pod. Hey, Kate. So someone in our Facebook group made a joke saying that you never finish books. So I'm just curious, have you finished any books lately? So I believe the last Audible ad was talking about Blackout. And no, I haven't finished that one. I often don't finish books, but I don't feel bad because I'm just listening. I'm currently listening to a book on emotional childhood neglect called Running on Empty. And if you guys sign up to audibletrial.com slash seltzer squad, you can get your first month for free and listen to books haphazardly like we do. The best part about listening to a book on Audible is like, it's kind of like a podcast. You can drop it at any time and pick it up anytime. So definitely use our promo code and get your first month free. I'm going to read B. Um, Also, wait, L. If you're hearing this, send us an update. Yeah, sorry. Email us and put in the subject line like story update, update. so we can yeah, so that we can um <laughs> let everybody, everybody know. I want to know. Yeah. Enough time has passed now where I'm like it's been a significant amount of time, mm-hmm. so I'm curious where where she stands now. Yes. Sorry. Okay. B writes, I'm a gay male, and much of my drug and alcohol use was centered around using that in community at gay events and settings with the gay people. My year's calendar was made up of prides and parties and the drug-fueled interactions that happened there. It was where things happened, where you saw people, where you interacted, where you talked about things that happened, ran into people. Basically, it was a gay scene, and I was part of it. Now I'm sober. I see these events happening again in P-Town, Fire Island, Pride, mostly on Instagram, and I can't help but think, how am I going to feel like things are happening in my life again without these scene interactions? The irony is that when I used to party, nothing much would happen because the residual come down and after effects or my life would be limited to focusing on these parties and the inevitable drug use that they centered around for me and indeed many other gay men or attendees. So my question is, how can I feel like there are things in my ha- things happening in my life again, given that so much purportedly happens at these events? I don't want to go to these events and be high, but there is a but is there a way to move on from the FOMO of partying in general and interact with other ways with this scene? Any advice would be helpful. This is similar to that one question we got, right? Mm-hmm. I mean. I think they were looking for more the gay community aspect of things. and Yeah, that's true. I think this is a very relatable topic no matter what you're, if you're gay or not. Um, How am I going to feel like things are happening in my life again? I feel like that all the time. Um, Yeah. If they happen differently is what immediately what I think is like things happen in my life differently. And I'm often surprised at sort of... um, you know, if you if you enjoy these events, how can you become involved in other ways that don't involve the drug and alcohol use? I'm sure there are sober parties at Pride. I'm sure there's sober stuff going on at many, many, many of these things. And there's definitely sober gays having fun on Fire Island. You just need to find them. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's like changing, changing the scene in a way of just finding different crews. And then things will definitely feel like they're happening. But like we've talked yeah. about before, things don't happen in the same way because it's not this like chaotic, intense energy anymore. <laughs> it's not this like super fucked up, you know, forget half the night, then spend the whole night reeling about what you did and being hungover. Like if that used to feel like it was happening, but like, I'm really glad that's not happening anymore in my life. Now it's like if I go out and I run into people and I see people and I enjoy myself and have a genuinely okay time, that was happening enough. And I think we were having an okay enough time. We just were, things felt escalated, even though I don't think they were. Also, 
I feel like just kind of removing yourself from those environments, like mm-hmm. not going to like parties and stuff. Um, it sucks because it's hard. Like I've, I've done it both ways. I like still party, like when mm-hmm. I say party, I should say, I still like went to bars and stuff when I was sober because I had FOMO, but then now I don't have FOMO. So he might be, it depends. I don't know. He might just be having FOMO. Do you feel and- like things are happening? Well, I, this is a, that's a hard question right now. Cause things aren't like, but you happening. still go to concerts. <laughs> are you still having fun at the concerts or are you not having as right. much fun as if you were blacked out? Right. Cause I mean, I, like I said, I didn't go to a concert last night and I'm mm-hmm. really glad I didn't cause it was a shit show. I'm right. like, yeah, if I was drunk and still doing drugs and stuff, I'm sure I would have had a great time. But like now, like, that's just not fun for me. I don't want to be with like people that are doing that. Mm-hmm. So, um, I didn't go because I'm a lazy person and didn't feel like leaving my house. But in hindsight, like if I would have known though, then I definitely want to have put myself in the, in that position, which mm-hmm. kind of goes to like, same thing with like sober parties or I'm sorry, like pride parties mm-hmm. and gay parties, stuff like that. Like if you know that that's the situation that you're going to be walking into, maybe you just have to like refrain until there's also sober parties that happen or they were happening pre COVID mm-hmm. like Daybreaker and stuff where you can still go get that like intense party vibe, but yeah, it's happening in the morning and I'm sure there are people there doing drugs, but I think the majority of people <laughs> are not doing drugs and that's kind of the whole branding that, right. you know, you can go get your like dancing party scene, party scening out, but I don't know. Yeah, it's hard. Your You're right. Out. Like fun yeah. definitely changes. Uh, went in sobriety because like now but what's weird to me is like now I feel like I want to do more of those things like I would never want to go to like Santa Con while I was drinking because like the last thing Ew, that I no. wanted to do was like be fucking drunk with all of those people whereas you want to go to Santa Con not, now I don't want to go not <laughs> Santa Santa Con's a bad experience okay. uh, like but I feel like I would be more inclined now to like want to go to pride versus before just thinking about how much of a mess I was going to be. But uh-huh. like, you know, now I feel like I could do pride and feel like I it's happening for me. <laughs> mm, I guess it's just like, it's and the I could other enjoy people, myself. Yeah. The other messes that, but like, I would want to find sober, stress me out. sober shit to do for sure. So that's B. I don't know B if that's helpful. I think I feel like, you know, the sober gay might have better insights as to mm, what's really going on um, and how, great, to, how to hang suggestion. sober and where to find community in that. So I would definitely check them out and just keep finding, just keep finding more sober peeps and then go do the things that you used to do just without the drugs and alcohol and, and then gauge the temperature if you enjoy it or not. Cause like my definition of joy has changed. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I used to like need to go to the bar on Friday night to like be out and run Happy. into people yeah. but I didn't don't really like get anything yeah. from that I never got anything it was just like the feeling of going out and being yeah, out but being seen I, don't, and, I don't need that anymore yeah yeah um we have an update from L. <gasps> no that's do? the one that's the one that you just moved into the inbox stop I swear to god I'm gonna read it okay <gasps> This is so amazing. Okay. It's from a week ago. Okay. I know. All right, guys. This is like very Breaking amazing. news. Breaking news. <laughs> All right. I've been mostly sober okay. for the fa- for the last year. <laughs> Fell off for a couple months recently due to many factors, but I'm back on the sober boat now and loving life again. I wanted to write in and ask how you would deal with a sober mean girl. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, I don't know how else to describe it. This girl is also sober and part of my boyfriend's family, so I can't seem to escape her. She posts a lot um, about her sobriety on her social media. So one day I responded to one of her sober stories on IG agreeing with her point, and she instantly shut the conversation down and said she did not want to speak with me about it, about sobriety, that she wanted our journeys to be separate. It was delivered pretty rudely, but I apologized immediately and backed off. She has since turned two of my closest friends against me to the point that they stopped speaking to me, has ignored me anytime I try to be nice or friendly with her at family get-togethers, and makes regular posts on social media talking about mystery people who feel, quote, 
entitled to her sharing her sobriety with them just because she posts about it publicly, end quote. Hint, hint. Pretty sure I am who these posts are referring. Oh, no. Uh, posts keep refer- <laughs> referencing. Even though I only reached out to her one time and never acted upset with her for not wanting to talk to me. <laughs> She even commented on my six month sober post after I had silently removed her as a friend from my Facebook and implied that my post was actually about her and then went to her own Facebook to take credit for my sobriety and make fun of me. We obviously don't speak at all anymore after that. And she shocked me and hurt my feelings so much that I just refused to go to my boyfriend's family get togethers when she is present. I don't know what I ever did to offend her or piss her off. And the world may never know. I won't lie. Part of the reason for my relapse was that I was feeling so bad about the amount of rejection and poor treatment I received as a result of trying to share with her. I feel strongly, I'm sorry, I feel stronger than ever in my sobriety now, but this has really affected me for the better part of a year now. Do you guys have any tips dealing with someone who is constantly and aggressively trying to invalidate your sobriety? Do you want my petty feedback? First. I want all of it. <laughs> I'm mostly, I'm mostly in this girl's corner. The only thing I don't agree with Elle is kind of placing a little bit of blame on Goopy for her relapse. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I am so with you. I want to know this Goopy girl's fucking Instagram. I know. That's I what wanna, I was thinking halfway I'm, through. Is I was like, do we know these people? <laughs> shit. I think I deleted her. Well, it's fine. We'll find it. Um. I want to know who this girl is. Like the Elle, the send, send us Goopy's, send us Goopy's Insta handle. <laughs> no, we can't get oh into God. the weeds. Uh, okay. My petty feedback Im- immediately at the end is I was like, just become a sober influencer and be- get more famous than her. <laughs> but that's not that easy. <laughs> no, of course not. It's terrifyingly hard. But like, I mean, that would be like a nice jab. Is all I'm I saying, mean, and then you the could ultimate. find you could find friends and <laughs> share your sobriety struggles all in the same place. My number, my real reaction is, I hate this social media fucking shit with a passion. This like mm-hmm. passive aggressive bullshit that I'm annoyed for both parties. On on part of both parties because it's like, oh, she saw that I defriended her, like, blah, then she made yeah, a post, yeah, yeah. Then, like, oh, it's such a fucking rabbit hole that. The thing that stuck out to me is hint hint pretty sure I am the I am who these posts keep referencing like we don't know that. We can make those assumptions. That's true. We don't know that. We're personalizing it, L. We don't know that. She didn't say L is blah 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 blah. Yeah. So I think there's part of it is like a little bit of over personalization where it's she feels attacked, but we don't necessarily know Goopy's motives. But oh, I'm so curious. Um, I'm like, I'm legit trying to find. No, out. not yet. Like, we'll deep dive later. Um, I think you should continue to stay away from this girl. And if she tur- quote unquote yeah. turned two friends against you. No, you know, she's not OK. Like those weren't your she's friends. Bad. Obviously, we know that. Uh, yeah. And I don't know what Gooby could have done to turn them. They I don't. Like my true I friends, like couldn't be turned. This is the immediately the thing that I think. Like if somebody <laughs> reached out to you on social media and tried to turn you against me, I'd be like, well, then I guess she wasn't like my as much of a friend yeah, as I thought she was. That's like that's weird. weird. That's definitely weird. Um, but yeah. I mean, I think it's good that you're feeling stronger than ever in your sobriety. And again, I think my, some of my feedback is the same about you need to somehow in your mind diffuse how much power this goopy girl has over you because it's taking up it's it's living rent free in your head and it's not fair to you to hang on to this um I know. and that's true especially like in a way that could make you feel triggered enough to want to relapse we have to deal with why this rejection from her is so triggering to you and i'm yeah. not saying that i could deal with it in a better way i would also i think feel very triggered and you know, bad about myself, but that I would say that's the isolated thing that you need to work on is why does this rejection hurt so bad? Why do you care so much to the point of where it's rocking your core in the way in which it is? And like, you don't want to, yes, you can avoid the family get togethers to a certain degree, but also, you know, life is life and you're going to have to come face to face with this girl. You need to like feel stronger than ever being in the room with her. You got nothing to prove to this chick. We don't care about Goopy. 
I know it's so like easy to get transfixed on like the one person mm-hmm. that's it. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. So I, I feel for L cause it's like, I don't know. I've been, I get it. I can't it. believe we like, had an update. <gasps> I, how crazy was that? She commented know. on my, on my six month sober post after I had removed her. Wonder what she said. Was it nice? Like, I don't know. I would not, I would not even, I would just pretend that this girl's not even around. That's what I would do. I would just like ignore her existence. I wouldn't because I, I wouldn't be able to. I would 100% be like checking this girl's mm. stories. And I would stuff, have to like, just I would have to me, mute you know? and take her away. And then I would go lurk like every quarter or something like that. I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah. what's Goopy up to, you know? And then I would be like, huh, I'm glad I don't know her anymore or something like that. I don't know. I just, I can't seem to escape her. Hmm. I know. Well, because she's like in the family. I'm like replying to her. I mean, right she now. kind <laughs> of is in the family, but she's not, not really in the family. You can't avoid it though. She's a person in your spheres. And so you've got to like make peace with how you're going to deal with that. It sucks that she feels way, like she can't. And you can't, need to rise above it or feel above also, it somehow. Like, but you need to start going to the family functions because you're letting her win. Mm, whoa. You're yeah. letting her win. Even if it, it like, makes your skin like your blood boil you need to try to go look good and just try to be happy like just pretend like her like does not bother you because mm-hmm. that's what's gonna like get to her mm-hmm. think about it like for sure she doesn't want you she doesn't want this she doesn't want it to succeed because she wants it to be her thing it's her thing that's all mm-hmm. it comes down to is this girl's like a narcissist or whatever mm-hmm. so Elle needs to go there, in my opinion, and try to like just stop be responding better. to her sober shit on on social media. You have to I don't pretend think she is, but she said I I posted I responded to one of her sober stories on IG, agreeing with her point. I think that maybe was referencing back to the wanting our journeys to be separate. So stop commenting on her shit, mute her, get rid of her. I don't think like a delete is necessary just because you are friends with her and like, or you are sim- in similar circles. So that she could be her weird. Already. No, I know. But I'm saying like pre that, I don't know that I would continue to like um, delete because it just creates like further yeah, animosity. It, it does create. Yeah. That's I would true. just let it and lie it and mute her done. and hide her notifications because I would be like, you're dead to me. I don't need, I don't need this in my life. I'm sorry. I'm writing to Elle right now. <laughs> but she's been mostly sober for the last year. I think that's a good thing. It sounds yeah, like she's in a place and heading in the right direction. Elk, oh my God. Do we need like another update? Or is that what we're asking for? Elle, update us again. I wrote, hey. Now the whole Seltzer squad is invo- invested. I know. We're all invested. I wrote, we read this and your update on the recording we did today. Oh my God. We need to know this chick's IG. And I'll just like, don't worry. We won't like. <laughs> don't worry we won't we're gonna post about her no we share won't share it um, with this squad but yeah okay send that's deep <laughs> I think that's sober tricky. mean girls is like a very big <clears throat> deal because I think everybody has a sober mean girl in their life yeah there's also like it didn't I out. Uh, it's that and there um, recently been sober mean girls like influencers like in the sober community like yeah they think that happens all the time like yeah it's this pedestal shit that's like annoying and yeah i don't have time for that you're just we're all just trying to do our fucking best here exactly stay out of other people's stories if you don't have anything nice to say yeah seriously and don't if you are a sober influencer stop posting ambiguous weird things passive aggressively if you have a problem with someone take it up with them yeah don't like be weird third person on Instagram, it's annoying for all of us because then we're all at home thinking, like, is she talking about me? And I'm like, <laughs> and that's the thing. Everyone's like, we're thinking already, that. Like, we're already vulnerable. We don't like need extra, like, totally. Oh, shit in our head. But whatever. This girl sucks. So we will always um, be here to be your sober big sisters, guys. Yeah. Until we meet again. Be nice to yourself. And don't forget hangovers. Hangovers suck. suck.
Thanks for listening. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. Every review helps other listeners find us. Music by Dead Go West. Art by Kate Sander. For show notes and resources, check out SeltzerSquad.com.